Hello my friends who are listening to eBird Online and I'm back with another review. And so as you guys already know, I've taken an extended break. So what I'm going to do is give a reaction video to the tell-all. And by that I mean of course the tell-all for 90 Day Fiancé, 90 Day is the other way, season 4. Guys, I've got very little time to lose, so I'd just like to say like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And let's get straight into it. So as per usual, the tell-all's taking place in NYC. But guys, judging by the opening credits, there's an awful lot of crap talking going on from certain 90 Day Fiancé stars. And as far as I'm concerned, it's just as well that some of the other halves are halfway across the world. Otherwise, I wager there'd be a lot less shit talking. And I mean an awful lot less. But just before we get into our first couple, in the green room they're all sitting chatting, and it would seem that Gabe has a lot of thoughts on a lot of different people, and it seems he doesn't like Osama. Agreed. And he also doesn't like Danielle or Chris. Again, agreed. And so all of the guys go from the green room onto the set, and then we discover that there's going to, once more, be two tell-all commentators. Ooh, the excitement. We're treated to shots of them putting on shoes and jackets and generally getting ready. I wonder who it can be. Guys, if you're wondering with me, wonder no more. Inexplicably, it's Tim and Veronica. Now, Veronica, who knows what she's going to give, but Tim, I remember last time, gave both weird and wildly inaccurate takes on pretty much everything. Come on, TLC. There were two people last time. One was good and one was absolute dog crap. You've decided to opt once more for the one that was dog crap. Literally, what is wrong with you? All I've got to say at this point is bring back Kenny. Let him know that you're going to be dispensing of his services. It's been nice knowing him. And you wish him all the best for the future. Literally, have that chat with him. If you decide you don't want to have that chat with him, don't worry. Give me his number and I'll bell him myself. And so Sean introduces the show and she lets us all know that 90 Day Fiancé have interpreters on hand at all times, so nothing's lost in translation. Really, Sean? Really? Are we going to have this conversation? Your interpreters are the equivalent of, I don't know, Chinese whispers in a school playground. Every time your interpreters get to so-called work, my comments section is littered with people from that self-same country who speak that very same language, letting me know that your interpreters have got it all wrong and they appear to be 15-year-olds using Google Translate. <laughs> Honestly, guys, let's not with TLC and their so-called interpreters. I'd genuinely be more likely to work out what was being said from their body language. And so the first couple we're going to be covering today is Debbie and Osama. Debbie sitting there on stage resplendent, like a cross between Big Bird and Penelope Pitstop. <laughs> Ask your mum. Or for some of you, your granny. And Debbie tells us that she hasn't spoken to Osama since she left Morocco. And she also lets us know, well in fact he lets us know, that he's called her thousands of times. Osama, that's known in the US of A as stalking. That's toxic behaviour. <laughs> and next up it's Danielle and Johan. She lets Sean know that they're still technically married. She forgets to say that she's technically a liar, technically a bankrupt and technically a would-be cheater. Johan laughs and says yeah we're still married. And that's about right. That's about how seriously Johan takes this union. And next up Sean says hi to Jen and Rishi. And Rishi looks like he's auditioning for Dancing with the Stars, the gay version. <laughs> oh dear, what is that you're wearing? Jen lets Sean know that they're still in touch. Oh, quel surprise. Jen's the only person that I've known who when someone's told them they can't marry them and all the promises that they made have come to nothing, asks that person for a sit-down meeting to let them know that they're no longer in a relationship. Jen, you know, I know, and everybody else knows, you were waiting for him to throw himself on his knees and beg to have you back. But alas, he didn't. And then on to Gabe and Isabel. And they let everybody know that they're in love and they really miss each other. And guys, I suppose time will tell, but I believe that these two are the only real love story from this season. And finally, we get to my, well, second favourite couple, Nicole and Mahmood. And Nicole's wearing a rather racy, off-the-shoulder affair. And she lets us know that Mahmoud wasn't really happy about it. And he wanted her to wear something far more conservative. Oh well, never mind Mahmoud. I want doesn't get. <laughs> <laughs> 
and so it hasn't escaped my attention that Mahmoud is planning to move to the US of A to see if he and Nicole can work out their relationship woes. Now if Mahmoud ever does find himself on US soil, I've got an amazing plan for Nicole. Now this plan's one of the best, it's top draw, it's one of Ebert's finest. You move as a couple to Miami Beach during spring break. <laughs> I think this is going to help desensitising Mohammed. He'll be so used to seeing women wearing thongs and nipple tassels just to go out for dinner that all of Nicole's outfits will literally look like full-on burkas. Guys, don't mention it. It's what I do. I solve problems. <laughs> I create them as well, but hey-ho. So finally, they get on to Chris and Jamie. And Sean asked Jamie, have you spoken since your final explosive argument? And Jamie said, nope, not at all. And Chris went, nope. And you can see on both the ladies' faces that there's no putting this shiz back together. And I for one am quite glad that Jamie's seen sense. So the first couple that we're going to look at in depth is Debbie and Osama. And we're treated to VT of the couple in Morocco when Debbie first discovers that, well, Osama ain't shit. And Debbie winces as she hears Osama say, yeah, I want you to stay for a couple of weeks and then go home and then we'll assess and I'll consider if or not I want to marry you. And then we see further VT, in which he's basically sticking it on her and saying that he wants to move to the US of A and he wants to guarantee his future, which as we all knew, that was always the plan. The plan was always a financial one in Osama's mind. So then Sean asked Osama, what he thought went wrong within this relationship. Well, we break up because DB told me that she will move to Morocco forever. But before, we never planned for this. I don't know, she's been smoking something or what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Asama, I call absolute bullish on that. You yourself during the season said that Debbie was going to live with you and your family in Morocco and then you argued with her about whether you wanted to stay with your parents for an extended period of time or whether you wanted to get a flat in the capital. There was no mention of America in the first instance. Debbie may be old, but she's certainly not senile. But then guess what? Johan butts in. Uh, Johan, your wife doesn't even want to hear your opinion. Why do you think we'd want to? <laughs> when you can convince her to listen to you, then we'll consider it. But of course he said, I am with Osama, you should give a young boy a chance. Debbie, let him go to America. And he gave rather an impassioned plea. And then Danielle said, um, we're not not-for-profit organisations. Uh, yes, that's right, Danielle. You're certainly not-for-profit. None of your businesses, none of your dealings, nothing you ever touch, none of it makes a profit. <laughs> oh dear. Daniel's most certainly for deficit. <laughs> Sometimes these jokes just write themselves. And everybody agrees that Johan's only saying that because that's what he wants to do. That's what he wants for himself. But I have to say one thing in Johan's defence. It's not the same situation because when you met Danielle, the explicit plan was to go to the US of A. That was part of the deal. And it was certainly not part of the deal when Debbie met Osama. I think he should have just been a little bit more upfront with her. But I think the reason he didn't is that if he was saying to her all along, I want to come to America, I want a green card, that relationship wouldn't have gone anywhere and he knew it. So he thought he'd lure her over to Morocco and then try and hit her with it. <coughs> he failed miserably. Better look next time, Osama, if there is a next time, which in fact, I doubt, I very much doubt. And so Debbie then said she didn't love Osama anymore, and he in turn said he didn't love Debbie. And Sean asked, quick as a flash, then why did you try and call her hundreds and hundreds of times? And he said, uh, yeah, um, I wanted to call her to let her know that the relationship was over. <laughs> I think the lack of phone calls made that very, very clear, Osama. Guys, sometimes I can't get my breath. And then of all people, Jen jumps in. And Jen said, oh, who makes phone calls to let somebody know that the relationship's over when they're not answering at uh, the same type of person that goes for a, a big showdown meeting with somebody when they've already said they can't marry you and it's adios. That type of person, Jen. Someone rather like, hmm, yourself. Look in the mirror, Jen. Look.
look in the mirror. And then Mahmoud lets the couple know that he thinks Osama's got game. And he thinks the age difference between the two is too great. He doesn't trust him. And he's right not to. And Rishi chimes in and he said Debbie found herself a robot. And he asked him direct, how can you just at the snap of a finger stop loving someone? And Debbie butted in and she said he was never sincere. But wait, what's going on? Who's this? And bounding onto the stage comes Debbie's son, Julian the Rosa. And he's got quite a lot to say to Osama. He said, you mess with somebody's mama. And then a few expletives. And I can't help but think, thank the Lord that Debbie said no to Osama coming over. Because I genuinely fear for his safety if he ever met her son. But bloody hell, Julian let rip. He called him a psychopath. He said he sent 60 texts in two hours. What? That's quite a lot of texts for someone who's no longer in love. And my take on this whole thing is that he's been trying to get women on the internet to take him to America for years. He finally hit on one Debbie. And once Debbie turned him down, he realised the chances of him achieving this again were, well, I want to say minimal, but they're lower than that. After seeing his teeth, I think they're zero. And that's why he's texted her 60 times in two hours. And I've got a bit of advice for Debbie. You should get yourself a 1-900 number and start taking his calls. <laughs> At least you can profit from this whole shit show. But Sean smells the bull-ish and she's got another question for him. Osama, you told us you were calling her multiple times to end the relationship. Did you send Debbie a text that said, I love you? I, I can't remember. Oh, right, I see. Osama can't remember. Well, I tell you who can. Debbie can. And Debbie says, you did. But then in another strange turn, Sean decides to ask Osama if he ever had a physical attraction to Debbie. Oh, Sean, I thought you were a trained journalist. The correct term for it is gerontophile. Osama, are you a gerontophile? <laughs> well, it turns out he might well be. Because he said, Debbie, tell them about the night in Casablanca. And to that, the e-bird says, Debbie, don't you dare. And so Debbie then divulged that Osama had tried it on when they were in Casablanca, but she knocked him back. Don't worry, Osama. If you ever come over to England, there's a Casablanca's in Wigan. I think the girls there are a little bit more, how can I say, giving. <laughs> You'll be all right in Casablanca's, mate. And then talk turns to the fact that Debbie's given Osama two to three grand, an amount which she calls chump change. And her son once more said, Osama, why don't you just get a job? And guys, Osama makes me laugh. Earlier he said something like, I'm a poet. I don't want to get a job. I will die for my art. Oh, Osama, roses are red, violets are blue. Your poems are shit and so are you. But then Gabe, who's ever the entrepreneur, said, why don't you sell some of your paintings? Tourists love to go on holiday and buy paintings. Oh no, oh no. Not for tortured artist Osama. He said he'll only sell to somebody who understands his art. It's not just for somebody to hang it on the living room wall. Osama, with all due respect, you're a goat farmer from Morocco. I've been around quite a lot of people who've bought art from quite eminent painters. And let me tell you this. A lot of them buy it just to speculate. They really don't understand the art. Get over yourself. And so finally, in the end, actually admitted that he has been trying to get Debbie back, but he said that he's not going to really try anymore and pursue her any further. And when Sean asked Debbie, would you pick up the phone to him? She said, no, I don't think so. Well, unless he moved a mountain. What does move a mountain mean, Debbie? Well, if he bought me a plane ticket. And Sean asked Osama if it was likely. And guess what? He said, no, I don't think so. And that's where we leave the story for this first part of the tell-all. So guys, let me know what you think to all of this. Do we think that Debbie will pick up the phone to Osama again? I think she certainly would, in the right circumstances. And do you think Osama has any opportunity to pull anybody else and manage to wangle his way into America? I don't think so. I think it's highly likely we'll never ever see him again. And that, as I say, was that, except one little thing which happened right at the end. Debbie seems to think that Jen is giving her son the copper, the glad eye. I'm not sure, but I find it exceedingly unlikely. She said she likes tall, handsome, charismatic guys and, uh, well, I'm not sure I think he fits the bill. Guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. If you've unsubscribed, come on guys, resubscribe. I'm back. Guys, thank you so much for listening. You've been listening to eBird Online and I bid you good day.